Hey gearheads, thanks for tuning in. On this episode of Dance Garage, Dan attempted to get the blue paint off the Malibu. It looks like it kind of worked. Let's see what happened. Hey Dan, run that intro. Hey Gearheads, thanks for tuning in to another exciting episode of Dan's Garage. And I say that because I think this is going to be an exciting video. I've been waiting for this video since I got this car home. Um, and it has to do with that blue paint. So somebody painted this thing over at some point in its history with a really crappy paint job, which is good because I think it'll come right off. And it's going to leave that pewter silver color underneath shining, which hopefully is the goal to get this car back to its original paint. This thing is all original. If you haven't seen the episodes on it, go check out the link up there. Um, they will be up there. No, it's up there. The original color is that pewter silver, and I think it's going to look really cool if we can get that paint off. So we've got that power washer. We're going to hook that up, and we're going to do some time lapse. We'll see how this thing comes out. But for now, let's get to power washing. All right, so I got this thing all hooked up. It is gas, and it is loud, so I'm going to have to turn the volume down on that. I may speed this up and do some music behind it um, and then that way we can kind of get through it quickly. I'll probably do a couple of little spots, maybe talk here and there. Uh, I think I'm going to start right here on the quarter panel, so let's see how it looks. Wow, that's exactly what I was hoping for. It's taking the blue paint off, but not the uh, original pewter silver. I am using a 25 degree tip. I think I'm gonna go down to the 15. That'll give me a little bit more concentration. And yes, I'm being protective, so I don't get that paint in my eyes. So this is that top spot. It cleaned off really nicely. And of course, with the water, you can kind of see a shine in there. Look at that, that looks nice. So here's what that, uh, 25 degree tip is doing so I'm going to go to the 15 that should take care of it a little bit better Well, so it doesn't look like all the paint is coming off as easily as I thought. It does work a little better with the 15 degree. And from the looks of this, it looks like above that paint line may all come off nicely. But down here below that line, it's, uh, it's pretty hard going. So I don't know if it'd be worth the time and effort and money um, or water to get that off. It might be easier to sand it or hit it lightly with a DA with something that'll cut that top layer and not the bottom. So let's go to a time lapse and uh, see what happens. Uh, again, it's working really well on the top of the quarter. That 
original silver paint is beautiful on the lower section it works again if I just concentrate on it a whole lot it might be easier to sand it off or I know there's a uh, sanding power washer uh, so Robert using it over at RNG garage go check out his channel if you haven't seen it link is down below on the door it's not doing as good um, you can see the before and after line there I spy a thumbnail picture uh, the bottom of the door Actually again, it does work, but it really have to concentrate on it. So I guess we'll uh, just keep Moving on here and then uh, I'll do some more time-lapse and then bring it back after this side is done and see what it looks like Alright, just giving the power washer a little break, but this is really what I wanted. This is kind of the money shot to see how good that paint is coming off. There's still a little bit of blue swirls that you can barely see in there, but again, I, I bet a light touch of some 320 or even higher sandpaper may get that uh, taken care of, and this beautiful silver will be back. Um, so I'm going to keep going on the front of this fender. I should pretty much be able to get the whole fender uh, looking that clean at the top. Uh, again, the door didn't really clean up as well. Probably had some more work done to it or it looks like it's got some surface rust, but the quarter did. So uh, at least the top half of the car should look good. The hood uh, is really just dirty. It doesn't have any of the blue paint on it anymore. Goes to show you what a poor job it was, but we'll clean that off and then uh, we'll take a look. I gotta say another thing with this power washer, Look how far back it is, and I can get all the way around half of the car. So this has a really long hose. That's another plus of this power washer, which I'll put it uh, in the description below the link to Amazon if you'd like to buy one. I'm not endorsed by them or anything. I bought this with my own money, but I think it's pretty good so far. You can see here pretty good. Uh, the hood had a little bit of blue paint, but it was mostly just dirt. So uh, that line shows you how well it cleans up. You get the reflection because it's wet, but when this is dry, I think it's gonna look pretty good. Might be hard to see with the reflection, but you can see all that blue paint in there and the dirt, and you see that line of clean. Um, doesn't look perfect, but looks a lot better. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. There was two terms in the 70s and 80s with body work, not that I'm an expert, but one is called cave and pave and one is called bondo, and this is what happened. So as I said, when this car was new on the paperwork, it said Denton Hood. I thought it was the Ford they traded in, but apparently it was this. Um, they must have knocked it into something, um, and what they decided to do instead of knocking it out, probably not much good access back there anyway, but what they did was basically just 
filled it up full of Bondo. I mean, look how thick that is. That's, that's pretty thick. So they just filled it up and basically slapped some paint over it. And uh, obviously this piece too. So they just Bondoed over this whole thing. Obviously a bad idea because as you can see, Bondo over time will shrink and water will get behind it and it'll just pop off and now you still have your damage. So not the right way to fix things. It's hard to get a good angle on how deep this is, but it's pretty nasty. Um, I think it's fixable. I mean, at worst you can put a patch over it or something, but anyway, moving on. So the hood otherwise came out pretty good, cleaned it up. Um, the fender is kind of looking as good as the other side, I would say. This door actually cleaned up better than the other door. Um, there is another repair spot here. You can see it didn't, uh, the blue paint didn't stick to it as well. Um, but uh, it doesn't have as many rust issues and surface rust as the uh, other door. You can see here how the paint job, you just taped off the molding and uh, that's why you still have the original paint under that. So that's a lesson on uh, less expensive paint jobs. They just don't take anything off and paint over it. Um, the quarter came out pretty much like the other quarter. This one cleaned up a little bit better. Uh, again, it wasn't too hard to get this paint down here a little bit cleaner, but down here, I don't know, I guess they painted that a little bit deeper, so that's, uh, or a little bit thicker rather, so that's not cleaning up, but this came out pretty well. So we're gonna move on to the trunk area. Uh, the trunk, like the hood, doesn't have a lot of paint on it, but it does have some surface rust. Obviously, uh, water is not gonna get rid of rust. That would need to be sanded down, but like I showed uh, in one of the other videos, on the cleanup video, I believe, this trunk is actually in pretty good shape. So we're gonna clean up the top of that uh, quarter panel. We'll clean off the back of this trunk, Let's see what it looks like. And we'll also go ahead and spray this rear bumper, which does have a huge dent right there. But otherwise, it's in pretty good shape. All right, so we do have some shade on here, but it uh, didn't really do too much for the trunk. Of course, we do have the uh, the image of the Chevelle emblem in there, which I love. Uh, I guess we don't have an emblem for this one. Um, and the bumper cleaned up a little bit. Of course, it does have that dent on this side, but that could probably be straightened out. We do have the uh, same problems as we had with the other quarter with these holes. But let's kind of take an overview of the whole car and see what it looks like. All right, now that the car is washed, there's one more thing I have to do on this episode, and it has to do with those wheels. And these tires. Well, four of them anyway. Do you know how sometimes you collect so much stuff you kind of forget what's what? Well, let me show you my haul, as Ashley likes to call it, from the last couple weekends. So I recently picked up this set of brand new 15 by 8 rallies, but this car wouldn't have had 15 by 8. It would have had 14 by 7 or maybe even 14 by 6 rallies. Which I do have a set of each of those, but they're not really clean and that's not even the right rally. And yes, I bought a set of SS wheels as well, and not sure what I'm going to do with those, but they're not going on this. So I had to kind of look through my pile, which I need to move anyway because it's in the way now, for the right wheels, and I did find that this is actually the correct wheel for the car, but I only have one. On one of the hauls, I did buy a set of stock 14-inch wheels and tires, which I probably will put on the car, although I do have sets of tires, 14, 15-inch, and assorted other tires, and I actually still have a bunch of tires up there. Or I just leave the wheels that are on it, on it, because they're stock, but the backs are white and the fronts are black, so that doesn't match, I don't like it. And these are actually not even five on four and three quarter, they're five on five, so I had to kind of all them out to uh, get them to fit, so I don't like that. So it's basically between those or the Rally 14s, and I put those tires on it, so I'm going to have to look through those rallies, see if four of them look fairly clean, and if I want to do that, then I'll go ahead and mount those up and put them on the car. I'm going to come back and cut to putting them on the car and show you one other problem i got to fix. Okay guys, so here's what we ended up with. I went with the Corvette style rallies. I just love these things, the way they look. They make anything look awesome. And they fit too, but we do have one problem. This one's locked up. Also needs a bushing, but I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about it being locked up. So let's pull this off and check uh, what the disc brakes look like. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. Spins just fine. It must have just been the wheel was caught up on this, so. That is good news. And these, I'm pretty sure, will clear. So this will rotate just fine. See that? Goes to show you sometimes you think you have a problem when you don't have a problem. You just have an opportunity to change. I don't know. All right, let's go. Always torque these. I'm just putting it on because we need to have it on. And it spins, so problem solved. So other than the door from the crease, the belt line up, uh, the car actually cleaned up really nice. I did put the vet rallies on it. I think they just make it look so much better. I know they're not the right rallies for these cars, but the tires are holding there and I had the wheels, so that's what we got. The front end almost complete. Uh, the hood looks real clean. The fender looks nice. So up here uh, actually makes the car look pretty good. I think the passenger side actually looks even better because the top of the door cleaned up. So we have the whole line at the top here that's cleaned off of the blue paint showing the original pewter silver. So that's it for the power wash video. The next step on this car is going to be trying to get it running. I did free up the engine, so I got a battery for it. We're pretty much gonna juice up the starter and uh, see what happens. If it turns over, we'll put some spark to it, put some gas to it, see if we can get this baby running. And then we'll be doing a walk around and it's gonna be for sale. It may go to auction. So if you're interested, just keep up with my social medias. And as always with any other cars, you can uh, email me at dansgaragenc at gmail.com. I had to do this ending of the video in here because it's so hot outside. And I do have uh, something else cool here that you'll be seeing more of coming up soon. So until then, check out all the links to the channels below and the links to the products I've mentioned on this uh, video. And until next time, stay positive and keep on renting.